The Butterfly Grove here in Pismo Beach is a really harsh environment for the delicate monarch butterfly. It's just maybe 30 eucalyptus trees, dozen or so small pine trees, and that's it. The grove itself is bordered by a really unfriendly highway. On the other side of that is a set of railroad tracks. On another side is the uh, is like a housing and development. And on the other side of the uh, eucalyptus grove is a motorhome campground. The city of Pismo really loves to talk about monarch butterflies in their travel brochures. They hawk it on their website. It's what a wonderful place to go to bring the family. However, they don't do a lot about protecting the grove, in my opinion. The grove keeps shrinking. If they were serious about it, they'd allocate more land to protect the butterflies. It's not a really nice place to winter over. And with all the other pressures we've talked about concerning the monarch butterflies, it's no wonder that what used to be hundreds of thousands of butterflies are now maybe a dozen or so. But to give you a really clear idea of how small this area is, how little land has been left to the monarch butterfly, since I've been talking, I have just walked the entirety circumference of the park. It's one trail central through the park and since I've been talking I walked all the way around it. They planted some butterfly friendly plants right across from the Porta Johns and the hand sanitizing station. If Pismo was really serious about keeping the uh, monarch butterfly grove alive, functioning, and doing what they can't their part to keep the monarch butterfly from becoming extinct it wouldn't be on such a small patch of land. There's no buffer between this grove and human civilization. The grove is dying. The monarch butterflies are approaching extinction. And we are witness to that extinction. <laughs>from Pismo Beach and the Monarch Butterfly Grove. The Monarch is the best known butterfly in North America. The Monarch Butterfly is the state insect of Alabama, Idaho, Illinois, Minnesota, and Texas. And there's a couple states that's gone a big step farther. It is the state butterfly for Vermont and the great state of West Virginia. Some organizations... That was not a butterfly. Did you see that? That was an angry, upset bee. Some organizations, such as the Cape May Bird Observatory, have monarch labeling programs. You know, if you're in the fruit section, you see these little tiny little stickers on the fruit. It has like a little number on them. That's about the size of the label they put on these butterflies. Seriously. They put it on the underside of the wing. Delicately, other researchers in other parts of the United States and Mexico and Canada find these markers and correlate the numbers in a database to see where it came from and who tagged the animal. This way we can see how far the uh, insect traveled or if it was ever seen again. The life cycle of a monarch butterfly is crazy. It took me a while to figure out what are, is going on. So in groves like these, where there's lots of butterflies, they start out here in the south. Right now we're in Pismo Beach, California, Southern California, right on the coast. And during the winter months, the butterflies winter over here. And as the weather starts to warm, they will migrate north to a feeding ground with milkweed. They gotta have them some milkweed. They love them some milkweed. Milkweed's a very important part of their life cycle. When they leave here on their way to uh, Canada, they may fly hundreds of miles, hundreds and hundreds of miles, and find another uh, area full of milkweed 
and there they will lay their eggs. And those eggs will hatch, those caterpillars will emerge, and they will feast on the milkweed until they're good, fat, and juicy. And there they will make a chrysalis. They will encapsulate themselves in this chrysalis. Then, once they go through metamorphosis and come out a beautiful monarch butterfly, they will fly a few hundred more miles and repeat the process. Find milkweed, lay eggs, get fat and juicy, build a chrysalis, go through metamorphosis, and they'll do that cycle again. And again, until the great, great, great grandchildren of the butterflies here make it to Canada in the summer. The butterflies here ne that leave here never see Canada. They never see the destination. But somehow the animal is instinctful enough to know the path there. It gets as far as it can get, lays its eggs, and dies. Then the next generation takes it. It's completely different, of course, on the way back. The monarch butterfly on the way back becomes a super butterfly, a super monarch. I'm thinking Mothra? Not sure. But anyway, that butterfly <laughs> Where was I? The super butterflies I'm kind of thinking Mothra, but not. They fly the whole journey back. They don't lay eggs and propagate. They don't lay eggs and propagate. They just use the nectar they find in flowering plants and fruit trees to power themselves, to give them the energy to migrate south. What used to be hundreds and hundreds of thousands is now a dozen. Not dozens. A singular dozen. I think I counted right at 12 this morning on my census. This whole growth. 12. Down from hundreds and hundreds of thousands. Monarchs are going extinct. There's climate change. And the problem they're having with the climate change is when their internal clock tells them to leave this grove and head north, Mother Nature may not have the milkweed waiting for them in its proper state, in its proper maturity. So the butterfly is flying to a destination where there may not be food. So what's with all the milkweed? Milkweed is crucial for their survival. They have to lay their eggs on milkweed and once they're hatched, the caterpillar has to consume the milkweed. Only then can they make their chrysalis on milkweed. Now why is that? Why is that? Glycoside. One reason why the monarchs are able to make such a long trek between one side of North America to the other is because of this glycoside. They eat this milkweed, which is a poison to most animals and birds and other and rodentia and other things. No, not to eat that shape and color of butterfly because it's going to give me a really upset stomach. So as a quirk of evolution, other animals have learned not to eat the mother, the, the, the butterflies that look like this. And there's other butterflies that look just like this, and they also share that same advantage, but they are not poisonous. So if you take milkweed out of the equation, they've got no way to go, they do not reproduce, they die. That's one problem. Once they do leave the grove, they also have to battle industrial farming. Industrial farming uses a massive amount of pesticides, which kills all the bugs, including the pollinators. And it also, they use tremendous amounts of herbicide, which kills the milkweed that they depend on to make this migration. They depend on it to propagate. That's another issue. And if it's killing off the monarchs, you gotta wonder what it's doing to us, right? I feel my throat constructing. I've got pesticides. I'm an idiot. And the third biggest problem is loss of habitat. I know Pismo Beach has a lot of concern about the monarch butterflies, and especially with the little garden of butterfly-friendly plants that they put right beside the leaking porta johns. Seriously, Pismo, what are you doing? Hey there. Hey there. 
How are you doing? We're doing I'm doing fine. How about you? I'm doing well. I wanted to get my little rubber mount walk over and tap the tree low because it's they just go thousands of them at one time go flying. Right. But this year, not nearly, nearly, nearly close to that. Sad. <clears throat> Let's tap on the tree. One thing I didn't know when I started this video was how prolific butterflies are as pollinators. I mean, right under bumblebees and honeybees, butterflies and moths are our secondary source of pollination. The way they can make these long distance hops from California or Mexico into uh, Canada is because of the nectar. They need that kind of energy source, that dense energy in the nectar to make that long distance flight and so they're natural pollinators they will pollinate over hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and sometimes over a thousand miles they just need the nectar to migrate and all pollinators are under threat you know whether pesticides herbicides loss of habitat all pollinators are under threat and without pollinators there's no fruit without pollinators there's not a lot of vegetables if we lose our pollinators Humanity dies within a few years after that. So our civilization collapses. Without pollinators, we don't have a civilization. With, with that little stat in mind, what can you do? There's a lot you can do, there's a lot you can do. You, even if you've got just like a windowsill garden, you can plant some milkweed in it, or something, some sort of flower that's, that, uh, that pollinating species will like, help the bees too. That won't be, that, that won't be too shabby a waste of your day. You can also get your local schools maybe to plot out a 10 by 10 space. That would be awesome. And speak up about habitat destruction in your area. I mean, vote like your life depends on it because it kind of does. You can tell just from what I've shown you, it's not exactly top of mind to the local government here. And you can also hit the web. You can go to saveourmonarchs.org. Great place to start. All great, all sorts of great ideas. In Pismo, maybe turn this into a bike trail route some of the traffic away from the environmentally sensitive Monarch Grove. I know you love the cash flow from it, but you're going to have to take care of it. And did you have to build an airport right like next door? And did the approach have to go right over the grove? But seriously, Pismo, you can do better. This is ridiculous. Every shot I took had auto sounds or airplane sounds. And maybe you can repair the leaky porta johns. Just give it a try. Just give it a try. I mean, there's already people using this for bicycling. Right? So do better, Pismo. Try at least. Because these butterflies aren't going to keep coming back. You're killing them off. And you are complicit in their probable extinction. And that's on you. Not on me. And sure, not on the butterflies. Like at all. Butterflies don't vote. They can't even run for city council. They're just here until they're gone. And most people I've met today, oh, they'll be back. And yet the data shows they're not coming back. The data shows they're dying off because we can't take care of our planet. And what is special, you know what makes our community special, we can't even take care of. So that's it from the Pismo Beach Monarch Grove. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing on our channel, please subscribe. Also check out my uh, Patreon at SciWorks. Without you guys, I wouldn't be doing any of this. If you got any questions, just drop those in the comments below. So until next time, I'll be your lab partner. Take care, bye-bye. <laughs>
So what do you think about the uh, Pismo Beach Monarch Butterfly Grove? I think there used to be a lot more. Uh, I see one right now and their their habitat's gone, you know. Um, basically, um, something I uh, was just thinking a second ago is why is Pismo Beach putting millions of dollars into unnecessary signage in giant letters next to the beach for tourists when the, the nation's or the world's second largest popul or, um, pollinator is going extinct right here in our backyard. It's on us.